Dave. Thanks for doing my first slide for me. Um, <laughs> so Laurie Hutton collected about 200 rocks from all over the inlier. Um, and I yeah, collected another 100 odd in the Mary Kathleen domain. But basically the idea of the project is there's mafic rocks that are ubiquitous throughout the province. They occur in a couple of the major accumulations of them are really in the Leichhardt River fault trough and also in this um, in the eastern fold belt. And also there is significant amounts of mafic rocks throughout the Calcutin Leichhardt belt. So we um, yeah, we lorry collected the rocks and we also got we got Ken to look at them for a hundred samples of them and we also had David Gus to have it do an analysis of our database to try and shake something out of it that hopefully related to mineralization. This is oh, camera. Um, this is just the you know the broad groupings of the major mafic events. So there's mafic rocks in case in the KLB. And then there's a large amount in the Leichhardt Super Basin and also then the early Liza Super Basin. But there's also other smaller groups of mafic rocks throughout the... the so this is an overview of the distribution of the samples that we collected during the project. Um, so we also included a historical BMR samples. Data set was curated to exclude intermediate rocks and um, also excluded altered race rocks based on major element factors. So the vast majority of the rocks plot in the tholeitic field with some of the rocks a minority fall in the calcalkaline field. Um, and there's a, just a diagram there showing the evolution using a cerium nutrient ratio. So that comes down from the, mostly from the EMORB and moves up into the within plate basalts just for the entire data set. And previously, there'd been some subdivision done by Ellison Wyborn on the mostly on the dollarites, but that sort of was often based on the structural and fabric of the rocks, which kind of falls apart in the Mafic rocks. We find that there's variable amounts of deformation within rocks that are of the same unit. So, I attempt to see through that. So, initially, the idea of the project was to try and find out something about mineralization. So, that's just all the the mafic rocks plotted against copper and then plotted with zircon of the colouring. And this does seem to be a reasonable sort of a, a grouping that you can see that, you know, after about 14% total iron, the copper starts to decrease. But there isn't really any magmatic sulphide rocks I know of in Mount Isa, apart from up at um, Tea Tree and Karkala, where strategic resources are drilling at the moment, and they're finding some magmatic nickel sulfides, which is interesting. So they've just drilled this hole. So we're going to get some of the rocks and see where they fit into the rest of the story. But that's quite interesting. So that's the magma fertility aspect of it. So uh, after that, we decided to see what else we can find out about the data set. So we gave it David Gust and he divided the rocks up into three different groups based largely on the normalized rare earth patterns. So rare earth, so it's group one, which is this largely flat, pattern. And so they're still enriched in rare earth relative to chondrites, but they aren't really enriched in heavy rare earth relative to light rare earths. And then there's a group two, which is in green, so you can't see the average that well, uh, relative, uh, enriched in light rare earths relative to heavy rare, or heavy rare earths. And group three is extremely enriched in light rare earths. And we're able to extend this classification into our legacy data using a serial image ratio, because we don't have a full suite of rare earths for the whole data set so that's enabled us to divide off into different stratigraphic units and basically there's a progression from east to west which we'll really dig into a bit here so in the calcadine leichhardt domain all of the rocks pretty much fall into group two we attempted to do a fair bit of geochronology during this program but we found that basically the only rocks that had significant zircon in the mafic rocks were in the Calcutin Leichhardt domain. They all came out at 1850. Um, and they have epsilon hafniums of around zero. So there's, but we you know there is, John was just talking about the Argilla igneous event in the Calcutin Leichhardt belt. So we're not, the, we don't have any ages from these mafic rocks that indicate they're 1780, but the field relationships 
complex. <laughs> but anyway, the rare earth geochemistry indicates it's quite similar to what we see at 1780 anyway. So we move into the early Leichhardt Super Basin. So this just has, this is probably the major accumulation of mafic rocks in the Western Succession anyway, and also includes some rocks in the Mary Kathleen domain. And we find that basically all plot into the intracratonic tholeutic basalt field and they have a normal sort of tholeutic evolution. So that plot there shows this normal AFM diagram just symbolized by nickel content. So as the rocks become, get less nickel, they become, they move up the, the normal tholeutic curve. It's the same thing we see in the um, Calpid in Leichhardt belt. Moving to the Leichhardt River fault trough and we see the same thing here. It's eight kilometers of basalt out there. I don't, I haven't worked it here extensively, but it's a very important part of the Mafic story in Mount Isa, so I thought I'd include it. Nicely imaged on the animation go there. Nicely imaged in magnetics, which is good. Um, moving across the into the Belonga volcanics in the across the Pilgrim Fault, and we thought we might see a step in step change into the composition of Mafic rocks through here, but we actually so you basically all fall into group two with some rare excursions into group one. And so they also have what looks like a normal sort of a catholic evolution with a little bit of an excursion down there to the Calcalkaline field. And moving to the Mary Kathleen domain where things start to get a bit weirder. So it's the rocks here are dominated by the, the burst igneous association. So there's a bunch of dolerites which intrude the Corella formation in about 1740, and there's also the lime creek metabasol, which all plot on the tholeutic field, but where we have these bimodal um, sort of plutons, including the Mount Earl, Lunch Creek, and Myubi, we start seeing this excursion into the calcalkaline field and also having extremely uh, enriched in rare earths, some of the mafic rocks. a bit more on those. So they're distributed throughout the eastern side of the um, of the Mary Kathleen domain. They consist of grab gabbros, which are, have complex relationships with the granitoids. They sort of extend from 1740 up to about 1715, 1710 into the Mount Earl and Myobi igneous complex. They're spatially, all spatially so associated with copper deposits. And the Low temperature geochronology seems to, it's all reset at 1550, but they have a 1740 crystallization ages. As we step across the overhang shear into the Kurudala, Marimo Stavely, and Soldier's Cap domains, we see we get into the Tool Creek volcanics and development of the Isa Super Basin, where they are, they have a, a tholeutic trend, but they are not enriched in light rare earths. So we've Got the quite a, that's really the, the large scale break in the mafic rocks occurs as we step into the eastern fold belt there. It's just an AEM image. They're quite well imaged under cover. I thought that's interesting. You can easily pick out these dolerites and they're quite extensive at depth. And also, as you on the seismic, you can, we've had to, we, did a seismic interpretation. We included a gravity modeling section. We had to. We found we had to include significant volumes of mafic rocks in these in this part of the eastern succession. So these these rocks, while they they don't have the outcrop extent of the Leichhardt River fault trough, they also they seem to be quite extensive. You can see them on the mag, and you have to include them in any gravity modeling. This is further outboard. We have this large area of high density rocks. You have to include at the bottom of the basin there which sort of supports, I think supports what Karen with this model about extension and inclusion of large volumes. We move into the Lakeview dolerite, which is a post-orogenic um, dolerite, which it goes through the Mary Kathleen domain. I thought it was worth including because basically the chemistry of the Lakeview dolerite is comparable to the other dolerites in the Mary Kathleen domain, which to me indicates that Largely, the chemistry of these rocks is controlled by the, the crustal 
structure that they are intruded into and what's happening at the time. So there's, um, they are highly enriched in rare earth, so they've have assimilated. They're, they're not coming from a direct mantle source, I guess. So yeah, just broadly, there's three groups we've identified. We're able to to track throughout the entire inlier. They include so the group one is basically Leichhardt is um, the Tool Creek volcanic, which intrudes. Anyway, basically, Group One is out there in the east. It's the this highly extended Tool Creek volcanics and the early Isa Super Basin development, and then Group Two includes the majority of the normal mafic rocks in the Mary Kathleen domain and Leichhardt River fault trough, and also the rocks of the Calcutian Leichhardt belt. And then Group Three, which I haven't talked about much, is these highly enriched rocks, which basically occur at the edges of the Mary Kathleen domain, and they're associated with um, with felsic igneous rocks. And this slide here is sort of showing um, so that's group one, group two, and group three. And they're distinct on this plot, which is attempting to show the amount of crustal contamination, which is uh, no. <laughs> so, which <laughs> just saw Ken shaking his head. <laughs> anyway. Mavic rocks of the Calcutian Leichhardt Belt, Mary Kathleen Domain, Leichhardt River Domains have evidence of H3 partitioning, which indicates Garnet is present in the source region, whereas the Soldier's Cap and Kuridalis domains are dominated by less evolved signatures. It is a comp compatible with a thicker crust, which indicates that the cover rocks were formed with a basement architecture not dissimilar to what we've seen in our seismic interpretation. The data also suggests the enhanced melting in the Soldier's Cap group is compatible with significant extension. There's a number of tectonic diagrams which can pull apart these groups, but I've chosen this one because I think it um, indicates that well. Anyway, and also it seems to be supported by this Samarium Neogymium data, which um, we've got a step to more evolved rocks as we come across the overhead and shear and enter the group where we separate group one from group two. Right, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Probably got time for um, one or two quick questions. So, Dom, just about this diagram, a yep. question. So, you have that trend which clearly sits in the oceanic arc and continental arc field. Yeah. And then there you have the oceanic field. So, if that's crustal contamination. Did you try to model how much? Crustal contamination, do you need to get to that composition? As opposed know. to being derived from some kind of subduction related metasomatized mantle or something else? I'm not sure. <laughs> Got a quick a question online from online too. Uh, thanks, Dom. Have you seen any evidence or spatial or stratigraphic? for spatial or stratigraphic depletion slash leaching, particularly for copper or other minerals in these rocks? Um, there is some epidozoites that Laurie collected in the, um, in the southern part of the Leichhardt River fault trough, which we have, do have evidence for that, but we haven't been able to pull that out on the geochemistry. Yeah, I think there's one more yeah. quick one in the audience. Yeah. The settlement um, nepheline cyanide that occurs in the, I think the, south, the western, southern western portion of the Mary Kathleen belt, do you see any mafic rocks associated with that? Uh, we haven't think, got any in this data set. Because I think that would be a very interesting area to yep. focus on. All right. Thank you. One more quick one online. Um, do you think there's any potential for mafic magmatism between 1600 and 1500 MA in the Eastern Fold Belt? Yeah, I think there's some small amounts of it, but yeah, not very much. Low volume. Low volume, yeah. 